Hey guys, in this tutorial, this is going to be carrying on from the lava tutorial in the last one. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make some, I might make a rising and moving platforms first, we'll do lava bubbles in the next one. So to make some platforms, um, in your content browser, click on the lava folder that we made in the last one, right click, go blueprint class, type actor, and we'll just call this um, moving platform BP, just like that. So the idea is this is just going to be a block that can either move up and down, like rising and sinking, or can move side to side or whatever, um, periodically. So add component. The first thing that we'll add is a, a billboard, I guess. Um, and we'll call this position one. And then we might duplicate that and we'll call this one position two. And these are just going to mark the positions in the world where we want the platform to move. We can leave the little lizard guy as the billboard. So this is how they look, by the way. They're just little icons like that that do nothing at all except exist in the editor. Um, and you can just use them to visualize where you want things to go. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is go add component and we'll go static mesh. This is going to be our actual platform. Platform SM is what we'll call that. Go over to static mesh. We might just use a chamfer cube because um, they've got the rounded edges. They look a bit nicer. And I don't know, we'll just make you like scale three perhaps. Like that, how big is that? Yeah, I mean, that's a decent size platform. If we click on our lava, we can make that a bit bigger. Something like this. And then we have our um, moving platform in there. We might just give him a different material so he stands out from the rest of the objects in the world. We could use a brick. I think this came with the starter content. Yeah, that looks like a lava platform. The scale's a bit funny. Those are really big bricks, but whatever. That's cool. Okay, so we've got two positions. Let's just make the default 500x for one and negative 500x for the other, like that. And then what we're going to do um, on begin play, let's drag these position one and position two into your event graph and get. That's control drag to get. Off of that, say get world location and then promote that to a variable. And we're going to call that position one. Oops. Pause one. You kind of the same name as the billboard. So drag off of get uh, begin play to set that. And then do the exact same for the other one. Uh, what am I doing? And promote you to a variable as well. And we'll call you pause two. Just like that. Um, now that we've got those two positions, drag off of this and say timeline, and we're going to call this moving. And what, once we've got that, we might as well also just collapse this. Go right click and say collapse node, and we can just call this setup position info, just to keep things looking simple and to hide all of the mess in the blueprints. Okay, now for the moving timeline, um, it's going to be looping. The length can be one and add a new float track and call this alpha. Right click in here. I do this a lot. If you watch any of my tutorials, you'll see me do this heaps of times. Set the cur the first keyframe to 0 on 1, the next keyframe to 0 0.5 and 1, and the last keyframe to 1 and 0. Um, by the way, you right click to add a keyframe. Right click and say add a key to float curve. If you wanted to make this a bit smoother, you can click on the keyframe and you can say interpolation auto and then you can play with these little handles just like that um, to make it just a little bit smoother. Um, do the same with these ones down here like that. So now it looks more like a like a sine wave, I guess. Um, you could use a sine wave to do this as well, but let's just use the timeline. Okay, so... This is cycling between 0 and 1. So what we want to do now is we want to get a platform. And we're going to say set world location. Like that. Hook that up into update. And then off of new location, we're going to type in lerp vector. Lerp stands for linear interpolation. It's a node that will linearly, linearly, linearly <laughs> interpolate a value between A and B, depending on uh, a value between 0 and 1 on the alpha. So this cycles between 0 and 1, which means A and B will cycle, it'll cycle between A and B um, of whatever you put into here. 
So well, what we're going to do is we're going to put position 1 into A and then position 2 into B. Simple. And now this will cycle back and forth between A and B. Um, that'll work. So let's just test that. So if you look at the platform in here, you can see where the two little dinosaurs are. That's where the platform's going to move between. Boom, just like that. Now, if this is going to be a platforming game, that's obviously way too friggin' fast. So the next thing that we can do is in your components down here, um, click on moving, that's the timeline that we just made. Control drag that into here, and we can say set play rate, just like that. Hook that up, and then the play rate, we'll promote to a variable, and we'll just call this uh, movement. No, we'll just call it play rate. And make that public. You want to make that one exposed like that. And let's default that to, say, 0 0.1. So this timeline takes one second to complete. So this play rate, by setting that to 0 0.1, we're changing it to 10 seconds to complete. Whatever you set in here is going to be the speed at which the platform moves. And by making it editable, by clicking that little eye thing, we can click on this and we can change the play rate here in-game to whatever we want. So there we go. That's our moving lava platform. Can we jump on it? Yes, we can. Beautiful. So let's say we wanted a couple of these bad boys. Um, let's just make our lava a little bit wider, just like that. Um, we could have one just like that there. And if we hold Alt and then drag on the Y, we can have another one. And maybe you can move a bit faster. So you can be 0 0.25. And then we can have another faster one over here, which could be 0 0.5, just like that. I save everything, jump in. Now they're all moving at different speeds. So jump in onto that one. Jump onto this one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and we're taking damage in the library, you can see, which we set up last time. Alright, that's cool. So now, something else that we can do is let's just delete these two. Um, these billboards are fully customizable as well. So we can drag this one out further like that, and drag this one all the way over here, and if I just click simulate up here, now you can see it's moving from those larger positions out a lot further. So you can change them to whatever you want. Um, we could also, if we wanted to have a platform that would rise and fall, set the position, so click on position, set that to 0, 0, 0, and then change the Z to maybe, um, no, I'll leave that as 0 actually, and then select the other position, change that to 0, 0, 0, but then set the position to negative um, 300, like that. And now if we watch, we've got a sinking platform that'll sink beneath the lava, and then it will rise back up. And you can obviously change the speed of that to whatever you want. Um, yeah. So that's how you make some moving lava platforms that can move in lots of different ways. That's the end of this one. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to make some lava bubbles that can bounce out of the lava and do damage to our player. So that's it, guys. See you in the next one.